One of the worst calls that you're going to get is a customer calling to tell you that you have a fault light on your PLC. Now, a solid fault light is bad. That means that you need to next day air some hardware in. But a flashing fault can be recovered from and it's usually preventable. So today we are going to intentionally fault our PLC. That way we know what to look for when we get out in the field. Hi, this is Tim and I help you become a better technician so that you'll always be in demand. Now before you do this lesson, you should have hit our basic lessons such as upload, download, online, basic bit instructions. You should be familiar with it. This is kind of heading towards the deep in the pool, so we want to make sure that you know how to navigate the software. We're going to start in a new Studio 5000 program and we're going to double click on our controller tags and we're going to go to the edit tag tab at the bottom and we're going to make two tags. The first one is going to be my array and then let's hit the dialog box to the right of the dent and we are going to select a dimension of five. Then we're going to create a second one called index. It is going to be a double integer with no dimensions. Now let's open up our main routine and we're going to bring down a move instruction and we are going to move a source of one, two, three, four, five to my array and then open bracket index close bracket. Now we have a video on indexed addressing if you're not sure what we're doing here, but go ahead and download this to your PLC. Now let's go back to controller tags and at the bottom let's go to the monitor tags dialog and open up my array so that we can see elements 0 through 4. Now the index value is 0, so right now it's moving 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into position 0. If I put a 1 here, it's going to move it to 1. If I put a 2 here, it moves it to 2. Put a 3, it's going to move it to 3. A 4, it's going to move it to 4. And this next move is going to be the most common flashing fault that you will see out in the field, is now I'm going to move a value of 5 to it. Our controller fault indicator up here is flashing and we have a flashing fault light over here now. Also notice that our run LED is now out. Now in this case we only have one rung in our program. It's pretty obvious where the problem is, but let's talk through how to narrow down the problem if it's a larger program. Right beside a faulted you see it has a red drop down. If you hit that you're going to have two options, clear fault and go to fault. And guys, this is one time I have got to stress to you, do not hit that clear fault button until you have gathered as much information about this fault as possible. Treat this as a total CSI moment because you may clear the fault and as we're going to see in a second, it may come immediately back. But what's more worrisome is if you clear a fault and it doesn't come back because that means you have some type of erratic problem and you're not going to know what might have caused it. So we are going to click the go to faults and it says that we have a program fault can be trapped by a fault routine, array subscript too large or control data type position or length invalid. And it tells you right here that we're in the main task, main program, main routine and rung zero. So this is going to tell you where the problem occurred. And what happened was just so we can go over it really fast, I made this a double integer array of five elements. Five elements means we're going to use elements 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So when I entered 5, there's nowhere for it to go and that's going to fault the PLC. Now that we have the data about it, just to show how insanity usually works is we're going to run up here and we're going to clear the fault because our machine's not running and we need to get production back going. Well, when you clear the fault, notice it doesn't put it back into run mode. And as long as that run light is off, our machine's not going to be running. So we need to put it back into run mode and there's several ways we can do that. To the right of the remote run, there's a drop down and we can hit run there. Also under communications, there is a run mode right there. Also the clear fault and go to fault right under communications. And I'm going to put it into run and we're going to see that immediately goes back to fault because we didn't fix the problem. So right here, we need to get this value back into the zero to four range. 
And a little bit about how this happens is, let's say you had an HMI. This is the most common thing, is you got an HMI and it has recipes on it. The customer tells us that we need five parts. So I set up a system for 10 parts, thinking, yeah, that'll get them through forever. Well, 10 years passes or whatever, and now they have 10 parts, and they go to add an 11th part. And I didn't write the program to be able to deal with this, and so when they enter that number 11, that's it. It's going to fault it out. So we're going to change this back to a four and go ahead and clear our fault again. And this time when we put it into run mode, it's going to go into run mode and we're going to be good to go again. That's the quick and easy of how to identify your fault and get your machine back running. But we need to learn how to write better programs to prevent this from happening. So click here where we're going to talk about how to prevent array subscripts from going out of range.